Welcome back. It's time for Tech 24. And joining me in the studio is Charlotte Lamb. It's been a big week of big moves and even bigger chips. That's exactly right, Catherine, from NVIDIA's record history demand to Elon Musk's um, latest factory ambitions. The world's tech giants are racing to secure the hardware that powers artificial intelligence. NVIDIA's boss Jensen Huang is back in Taiwan this weekend, celebrating side by side with TSMC, the partner powering its success. In a showcase of American and Taiwanese innovation, the companies promise to continue their collaboration and boost economies. NVIDIA hit a historic milestone in October, becoming the first company valued at $5 trillion. And TSMC is expecting to expand to keep up. This includes building American factories too. But even as production surges, geopolitics looms. Huang says there have been no talks to sell its trademark Blackwell chips to China, despite recent diplomatic efforts. And fresh off accepting a pay package that could put him, could make him rather, the world's first trillionaire, Elon Musk says Tesla may need to build a massive chip factory to support its AI push and could be teaming up with Intel. Intel is a struggling US chip maker with its own factories but lags far behind Nvidia. Tesla says it's designing fifth generation AI chips to power its robo taxi ambitions, and Musk has outlined a potential factory plan at the company's dense, annual meeting. No Let's have a listen. Those are actual robots. As far as I can see, the only option is to go build some like uh, very big chip fab. Um, and then you've got to solve memory and packaging too. So, uh, but otherwise, you just, you just tap out at whatever the, the chip production rate is. Um, and um, so I guess Terra would be, you'd, you'd, you'd want to say it's, it's got to be at least 100,000 wafer starts per month, size fab. And maybe that would be one of 10 in a complex. So it would ultimately be a million wafer starts per month. Yeah, exactly. You can tell when, you, when it gets the giggle factor, that's probably a good sign that, that we're onto something special. Staying on AI chips, and it hasn't all been private sector. OpenAI's Sam Altman is pushing Washington to expand the Chips Act tax, tax credit to include AI servers, data centers, and grid infrastructure. In a post on X, Altman said re-industrializing America across the entire stack would boost the whole industry and was in line with the government's priorities. He also stressed it wasn't about handouts. OpenAI has pledged to spend $1.4 trillion over the next eight years to build its computing infrastructure. The White House's chief of science and technology has made it clear that there will be no federal bailout for AI. <laughs> And in other tech news, Coca-Cola's latest holiday ad is stirring up more than festive cheer. Let's take a look. That's right, the soft drink giant has brought back its classic holidays are coming theme, but it's made entirely with AI. It says it was designed to speed up production and push creative boundaries, but not everyone's impressed. Social media users have called it soulless and the best promo Pepsi ever got. Critics and industry unions are once again calling for better AI regulation and worker protections. It's the second time Coca-Cola has used AI in its holiday campaign, this time entirely. And despite another year of criticism, it stands by the advertisement, saying it's the future, merging AI innovation with holiday classic nostalgia. And finally, a little linguistic tech to end on. Vibe coding has been named the 2025 Collins Dictionary's Word of the Year. Coined by AI pioneer Andre Kapathy, vibe coding describes a new way of programming, one where computer systems are created by simply describing them to an AI chatbot instead of writing code manually. The Collins Dictionary blog calls it programming by vibes, not variables. And while tech, tech experts debate whether it's revolutionary or reckless, the term has resonated far beyond Silicon Valley and seems to capture how deeply AI has woven itself into work and everyday life. And Catherine, that's your tech roundup for the week.
Charlotte, thanks so much for filling us in here and teaching us a few new words. I hadn't heard of vibe coding before, so I'll be on the lookout for that. And that's all we have time for in this segment. But stay with us. We'll be back with more news. Thank you.